In this video, we brew on the Robo Brew microbrewery for the first time, and that's coming up next. So we are here. All right, so this was the part where I was supposed to tell you guys that if you go over to More Beer, put the Robo Brew in your shopping cart, and use the promo code SPARK, you would get a free soulless hop pale ale kit, which is basically a zombie dust clone, included with your Robo Brew for free. <laughs> Little did we know that this unit was going to be so popular that they would sell out. So unfortunately, there is no Robo Brews to be able to use my promo code. So what we have done is I worked with More Beer and they're going to go ahead and do a promo code for me for this video. And if you go over there to their website and add the Soulless Hot Pale Ale Kit to your cart, it can be either extract or all grain kit, and you use the code SPARK, you can actually get $5 off of that kit, kind of to make amends for running out of stock. So um, hopefully that helps out a little bit. And if you want to be notified whenever the Robo Brew comes back in stock with more beer, they are going to let me do that same promo in the future when they get the units back in stock. Send me an email to brian at shortcircuitedbrewers.com and I'll put a link in the description below. I won't send you any emails about anything else but that. You won't be on any kind of email list or spam list or anything like that. But if you want to be notified when those units come back in stock so you can take advantage of that special offer, email me. I'll let you know. Let's get back to the video. Um, I have a fair amount of experience with electric brewing in my Herm system here. And Mark with me today, he has a pretty extensive background in brewing a bag. A brewing a bag brewer for a quite a long time. In fact, almost all my brewing time. Um, started out with a couple extract batches and then really quickly wanted to switch to all grain and then uh, switched to single vessel brew in the bag and just one kettle cleanup uh, really stood out to me. So I've had my eye on systems like this for quite a while and have wanted to switch to electric. I want to kind of take a look and see how we can bring our both of our you know cumulative knowledge together and see if we can't come up with some good results on this. I know some folks have had varying issues with efficiency and some other things. We're going to fire this thing up for mash in and we will see you as soon as we get there. And I'm gonna time all of the steps as we go along. Coming up, we'll have all that information for you. We set our mash temperature to 159 degrees Fahrenheit and turned on both elements. All right, so we have reached our mash in temperature and there were a couple things that we noticed whenever we were heating up the mash water. The recirculation does make a little bit of difference on the heating and we were watching it and what was it about probably a degree or two every couple of minutes Yeah. whenever we had it recirculating it seemed like it was a little bit slower otherwise so I don't know if that has to do with you know heating elements are on the bottom and the sensors on the bottom but it certainly seemed like when we were recirculating the water it was heating up faster. Uh, I got to spark or mash in temperature about what 39 40 minutes something like that. Right, right there. Yeah. And once it got to the temperature, I thought it'd be a good idea. We took a, a long thermometer and actually put it down into the water in the malt pipe itself. And I found that it was a little bit low. So what we did was our target temperature to mash in was what, 159? 158, 159. Yeah, so we bumped it up to 163 and then that got us up to uh, temperature in the actual malt pipe itself. Because I, I was concerned that if we mashed in the coolness of the grains, everything's gonna drop that temperature even farther than what we want the mash temperature to be and then we would have some issues getting it back up with just using the 500 watt element. So we are gonna mash in now and we'll roll that footage here in a second. The recipe that we decided to do our first brew day with was a simple ESB that Mark had brewed before. We added nine pounds or four kilos of Maris Otter and one pound or 453 grams of medium crystal, which is a 60 lava bond. Uh, we did do some light water adjustments. We added two and a half grams of calcium chloride and 3.1 grams of gypsum. And we also added one milliliter of lactic acid and that was just to adjust the pH a little bit. One item that was optional that we got with the unit was an aeration cone that goes in the end of the hose and we attached that so that we'd get a nice even spray over top of the grain bed after attaching the top plate and the recirculation inlet. All right, so we're mashing and we're coming up on that 60 minute mark and one of the things that Mark had told me about was a mash out step was kind of critical with Brunebeck. So what exactly is that? And, and then how would we apply that to the Robo Brew? If you read the science behind all of the original Brew in the Bag guys down in Australia that developed the process, 
Um, the science says that you should bring the mash temperature up to 168-ish um, to really release the sh help the sugars release out of the grain. Okay, so it just kind of loosens up the sugars and makes it more soluble and everything. Indeed. And then we are going to do like a slight rinse on the grains just so that we can make sure we've rinsed all that sugar and everything that was loosened up from the grains because some of it attaches to the husks and all that stuff in there. So we're going to do like a little slight rinse on it. All right, so we've reached our uh, mash out uh, temperature. Well, what would you call it? I guess our, our raise to mash out step, yeah, mash if you will. Out. We're at the end of that. So we're going to go ahead and take the recirculation arm off and we will raise the basket up so that we can not only drain the grain pipe, but we will also do a slight sparge just to rinse the grains. So we'll go ahead and get that done now. Pretty much all there is to it. And as you can hear, the grain is draining down. The malt pipe is emptying. One of the things that some people have talked about having an issue with is seeing what the level of their volume is in the pot while they have the malt pipe sitting on top. And I've got a, a little trick for that. If you hook a hose up to the spigot on the front of the unit, you can actually run it around the back end and you can open, Mark, if you'll open that valve for me, this actually will work like a water level, uh, some ancient Egyptian technology here. <laughs> Let it settle, and I don't know if you should be able to see on camera there, just over four gallons, something like that, pretty close. Let me let it settle a little bit here, about four and a half gallons. That's just a quick little tip for you guys if you're having some trouble trying to figure out exactly how much liquid is in the kettle whenever you do the mash out at the, when you uh, pick up the grain pipe and put it up on top. We rinse the grain in the grain pipe with two gallons or 7.5 liters of water. One thing we also did when we began doing the rinse was we turned the both of the elements on and set the temperature on the Robo Brew control panel to 225 degrees. About 43 minutes after that, we did reach boil. The hopping schedule for the beer was two ounces or 56 grams of Fuggles at boil and a 15 minute edition of one ounce or 28 grams of first gold and a five minute edition of one ounce or 28 grams of first gold as the aroma edition. So here's how we ended up on the brew day. We wound up with just a little bit more volume than what we were expecting. About five and a half gallons, we were expecting about 5.25 gallons in the fermenter. So we were a little bit high on that. We hit our gravity dead on, no issues with that at all. Uh, there's a couple recommendations that I would make. I wanted to have more footage for the review, but we ran into a couple of issues in the last part of the, the brew day. One of those was we were recirculating after we put in the immersion chiller. We added four ounces of hops to the boil as well as some Irish moss. And I don't know if the Irish moss caused the issue or what, but I was a little skeptical of whether or not the screen on the bottom, the false bottom, would capture all the hops or not, but it really did a great job. As a matter of fact, it, it captured so many that it stopped the flow when we were draining into the fermenter and also plugged up the pump, which I had to, we had to take the bottom off, take the unit apart to clean out the pump and all that stuff, which wasn't a big deal. I mean, the pump is very serviceable. A couple of screws on the side, a couple of hose clamps, take it apart, four screws on the front of the pump, not a big deal. But I just you know wanted to let you guys know that I had that issue. So a recommendation that I have would be definitely measure the volume in your Robo Brew because the gradation lines on mine were way off. Contacted Keg King about that. They told me that they were having some issues with manufacturing. They manufactured the unit as a flat sheet of stainless steel. Then it gets wrapped together, welded, and then crimped and rolled at the top. And they said that they were having some issues with with that process being consistent. So they're working on fixing that issue. I would also recommend a hop sack or some kind of hop bag to contain your hops in so you don't get a clogged pump or a stopped up screen like we experienced in our brew day. Overall, I think the unit is very good. Um, you know, I, I didn't see any other issues with it other than those small things and those are really not deal breakers to me. Those are just some things that you wanna know before you go and purchase the unit that you're gonna probably want to address. I have to say, I think it's a great system. At the price point, you get a lot for your money. I think it's a great system if somebody's looking to get into electric brewing and doesn't want to spend a lot of money or doesn't have a lot of room. I think it's a great system for people to do test batches for larger systems like mine. 
I also think it's a great system for people who have apartments or condos where they don't have a lot of space, as I said before. So, you know, I really have to take back some of the statements that I made in earlier videos about the 110 volt systems not being that great. I, I'm really, I have been impressed by this and uh, it's definitely changed my opinion to a certain degree, at least for this unit. As always, we appreciate your comments. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget, if you want to be notified when the unit is back in stock, send me an email, brian at shortcircuitofbrewers.com. I won't spam you or anything like that. I'll just notify you when it's back in stock and you'll be able to take advantage of that promo code SPARK to receive that free soulless hot pale ale kit from more beer again subscribe for more content be sure to ring the bell so that you'll be notified when we put out the next video we appreciate everyone all the support we've received we really appreciate it thank you so much this has been brian for short circuit of brewers we'll see you on the next video